Assalamu alaikum and warmest greetings to all of you. Uh, welcome back to our lecture on the topic Financial Regulatory Framework in Malaysia. We are now continuing with the subtopic under this, the topic, which is our statutory regulation on financial accounting and reporting. We have already discussed uh, Financial Reporting Act 1997 reporting uh, requirement and also the Income Tax Act 19, 19, 1967. And now we move on to uh, the regulation by the Security uh, Commission. So, a Security Commission is actually a, a public sector statutory body that was established under the Securities Commission Act 1990. So it was uh, established under Securities Commission Act 1993 as a public sector. So it's a public sector, public sector body. Okay. So what are the function of uh, Security Commissions? So Security Commission, the main function is to encourage and promote development of the capital market in Malaysia yeah, through regulating and enforcing regulating and enforcing all matters relating to security industry. Security industry uh, relating to, uh, for example, company that issue shares uh, to the public. Right. It has also uh, what you call statutory power as well as enforcement power. So it has enforcement power uh, by having investigative power yeah, to enforce compliance uh, through its regulation. So you um, whatever regulation by um, Securities Commission must be followed by the public company. For example, uh, it also requires compliance with the approved accounting standards of MASB, right? Um, therefore, Security Commission is the one that actually has the enforcement power to, requ uh, to require a company to prepare financial statement in compliance with approved accounting standards. In 2007, Capital Market Securities Act were being enacted in the parliament and with that the act now uh, requires uh, stronger compliance to the listed company to submit to the security commission so regulation by securities commission actually covers both to listed and unlisted company public company so they are required to do this to submit to the commission the auditor annual accounts two weeks before the AGM. So the similar requirements were also by uh, Companies Act uh, 2016, if you recall, right? But this one is two weeks. And also to have submitted, submitted interim and periodic financial report. Interim, uh, for example, quarterly report, report every, every, maybe every three months, quarterly, or maybe another one is uh, interim can also be half yearly report. Half yearly means every six months, so the period which are less than uh, one year, so that is called interim uh, financial period, and the report is what you call interim financial reports, right? So it can either be done quarterly or half yearly we go on to the next part so listed company are, are also required to keep accounting records which is uh, to be able to let them have a proper accounting record with the focus on being being able to explain the transaction of that company in terms of in the financial position in particular and also to be able to uh, show a true and fair profit or, or loss account or the SOPL and the statement of financial position. And not only that, they are also required to keep the proper document 
that are actually being attached when they prepare the financial statement. So when they have prepared the financial statement, the documents that were uh, the source document need to be attached there to be prepared from time to time. Meaning to say that not just the financial statement but the documents. Next, it should also be conveniently audited and has to be kept for seven years after the completion of the transaction. So maybe you can think of similarities to the previous two bodies when we talk about seven years. Companies Act 2016 also requires the same. The next one is Audit Oversight Board, another regulatory body, Audit Oversight Board. And it was also established under the same Act, Securities Commission Act. So under Securities Commission Act 1993, actually two bodies were being established. Uh, the first one just now was Securities Commission and now the second body that is the Audit Oversight Board. So it is mainly established to assist the Security Commission. So to be uh, the part in terms of assisting the Securities Commission to play the part. So they will oversee the auditors, the role of auditors in a public company, how auditors discharge their uh, responsibility. It is also to assist securities to protect the investor of a public company by promoting confidence in the quality so so that they have a quality financial statement high quality and also reliable audited financial statement of a public company so it's the audit oversight board that will play the role by looking at how auditors of public company has discharged their responsibility with regard to auditing financial statement it also has a three power of what to conduct inspection to this auditor and also to monitor programs of those auditors right those registered auditor auditor of the public company and we want uh, to assess these auditors compliance with the recognized auditing accounting and ethical standard including also looking at the compliance to the approve accounting standards so meaning to say that audit oversight board also is um, monitoring of have the statutory power to enforce the um, registered auditor to audit financial statement and see whether the financial statement has complied with the approved accounting stand, st uh, standards they can also sanction these auditors for whatever non compliance issue yeah so they can issue that within the provision of um, the act securities commission act part triple one a you can uh, check that later next number six is the regulation by bursa malaysia okay bursa malaysia was actually a uh, form as a private sector body so it was not a public sector body but a private sector body that were formed to regulate listed companies so listed company yeah on bursa malaysia not listed company in other stock exchange but it's just in bursa malaysia exchange However, it does not have legal power. So for Security Commission, they have the investigative and legal power. For Bursa Malaysia, they don't have the power to regulate the company, but they do have the power to delist this public company or to suspend them or to reprimand them for this errant listed company for any non-compliance within its regulation within the regulation so if they are non-compliance uh, by uh, uh, the uh, public company public listed company with the regulation of bursa malaysia so therefore they can be delisted or being suspended or being publicly reprimanded these are the 
provision regarding financial accounting and reporting as required under Bursa Malaysia listing requirement. The first one is pertaining to annual reporting. So you would see that they required similar things to be issued, financial statement to be issued to the shareholder not exceeding six months from the date of the year end or the close of the financial statement. And the annual audited account together with the auditors and directors report, meaning that the financial statement that has been audited and has also been uh, approved by the Board of Directors shall be given to the Bursa Malaysia Exchange for public release yeah, to be put in Bursa Malaysia website in the listed company's report not exceeding four months from the close of the financial year. So within four months after the financial year end, it must be submitted to the Bursa Malaysia, submitted via the website or then to be published in the website of Bursa Malaysia. Annual auditor account must be in the form of consolidated financial statement for companies that have um, um, not single company, we are talking about a group of a company, a company that, have, that has subsidiary, right? And it should be prepared. This one is related to the accounting in terms of related to the uh, regulation on um, financial reporting which is requirement for the companies to have the ad audited accounts being prepared in accordance with the approved accounting standard and pronouncement of the MSB and also not only MSB but the requirement of Companies Act 2016. Next. So just now I mentioned about interim reporting. I uh, mentioned interim reporting can either be three every three months. That is called quarterly report or six months, which are called which are called half. Yearly report. So they are required to comply with actually the interim reporting, not the half yearly, but they are required to comply with the quarterly. So they are required to have their quarter uh, report being quarterly report, the quarterly report, uh, reporting requirements to be um, complied by the public listed company, not public company, but public listed company must have a quarter report, meaning to say that if it's year end is 31st of December 2020, so they must have it uh, prepared every 31st March, yeah, 30th June, 30th September, and the year end itself, right. So it should be prepared in accordance with the MFRS 134 interim reporting. So there were a specific standard that requires this and the guideline is under MFRS 134 interim reporting. Quarter, quarterly reporting is one of the option under MFRS 134, right? And that uh, can be, uh, you can read them in detail later by uh, referring to the pages in your in your textbook to get detail um you can refer to page 11 okay page 11 now we move on to the regulation by bank negara malaysia or the central bank of malaysia so bank negara had issued two set of guidelines on financial reporting practice of financial institution, which is bank and financial institution under Bank Negara Malaysia. They have to follow the uh, BNM GP3 and BNM GP8. So these are Bank Negara Malaysia had um, actually 
had this uh, so-called Banking and Financial Institution Act 1989 or also known as Belfair. We move on to the next part, part 4, where uh, just now we were talking about the regulation by the Securities Commission, regulation by uh, Audit Oversight Board and um, regulation by um, Bursa Malaysia and the last one was the regulation by Bank Negara Malaysia. That was under the topic statutory regulation on financial accounting and reporting. And now we will be going to look at the reporting requirement of uh, this uh, uh, body pertaining to the type of entity. So let us look at the detail here. So if you can still recall, when we talk about business entity, you can have either incorporated entity and non incorporated entity okay so non incorporated entity refers to sole proprietor and partnership incorporated entity refers to company and company you have either sendirian berhad private company and Berhad. So that one it should be a thing that you understand. So then Berhad or private company, public company is where you have Berhad at the back. So these uh, are the issue of when we talk about the reporting entity. So we will start off with the non-incorporated entity, which is the sole proprietorship and the partnership. So these entities are required to comply with approved accounting standards. So they have to comply with approved accounting standard. They also have to submit their financial statement to the Inland Revenue Board. Inland Revenue Board for the purpose of uh, assessing the income tax, right? Assessing the uh, tax uh, that the company need to pay to the Inland Revenue Board. So they need to have their a financial statement being uh, submitted to the uh, Inland Revenue Board. So that was the requirement for these two types of business, right? But um, the next one is uh, we are looking at incorporated entity, yeah, incorporated entity, where for incorporated entity, right? For incorporated entity, you have, I mentioned to you just now, public and private company. So they need to also prepare financial statement and comply with approved accounting standards. So also about appro the approved accounting standard. Also comply with the Re Companies Act requirement, Companies Act 2016 for the private and um, for, for both private company and public company. However, for our uh, non-incorporated entity, this is not compulsory companies act. Yeah, these are not for this non-incorporated entity. So you must all be audited and also should reflect the true and fair view. So you need to have this submitted to company commission Malaysia. So your financial statement if you are having private company. And also need to submit your financial statement to the Inland Revenue Board for the purpose of assessing income tax under Income Tax Act 1967. So you also need to submit audited financial statement that has been prepared in accordance with finance, uh, the approved accounting standard to the IRB. So that was for the uh, incorporated entity. For uh, public company, okay, when we talk about public company, yeah, there are public listed and public non listed. So, for public non listed or unlisted company, yeah, 
unlisted company berhad but not listed in the bursa Malaysia. Same, they have to comply with the approved accounting standard. They have to prepare financial statement and accordance. They have to comply with the compliance uh, with the requirement of Companies Act. Submit the same thing to the in, uh, Inland Revenue Board. So these are the same one, two, three are the same for private company, right? But on top of that, they also need to comply with the Security Commission policy. Yeah, the right guideline of the Security Commission. So they have the guideline by the I by the SC. These are for public company, either listed or unlisted. The last one, if the if the public company is bank or financial institution, this is only when it is bank or financial institution. Let's say May Bank or maybe RH uh, Bank, CIMB Bank, right? So they may have to also observe and comply with the requirement of bank negara Malaysia because they are uh, if they are a listed. Uh, if they are unlisted um, company, but Maybank are listed. Let's say we talk about a, finan a financial institution that is not listed. Right. For incorporated entity, a listed public company, they need to comply with approved accounting standard, Companies Act, yeah, which is similar to the previous uh, unlisted company, Companies Act. Security Commission Guideline, Bursa Malaysia. So this is the new thing because they are a listed company in Bursa Malaysia Exchange. So they have to follow the Bursa Malaysia listing requirement. So the first three is the same. Of course, Income Tax Act is still status quo. You need to follow Income Tax Act. Audit Oversight Board. Okay, Audit. Also, the requirement of audit oversight board. This is for listed public company. Listed public company. Right. They need to also comply with the requirement of the audit oversight board. Yeah. Because auditor of a public company. Bank Negara Malaysia guideline if they are bank or financial institution so if they are bank and financial institution on top of following all other uh, statutory regulation they also need to uh, follow the guideline issued by bank negara uh, malaysia okay right so let's look at the summary of this so if you can check here these are some table given for approved accounting standard. Companies Act, Income Tax Act, which is under Inland Revenue Board, right? Security Commission Guideline, Audit Oversight Board, uh, and the regulation by Bursa Malaysia and regulation by Bank Negara Malaysia. So, so proprietorship only needs to follow two out of all you have there. Same goes to the partnership. Private company has extra, which is they have to comply with Companies Act. Right? Unlisted public company, they have to comply with extra things here, which is uh, the Security Commission. So by having this table, it's easy for you to check for what is the reporting requirement according to the types of business entities. So you can check this out yourself. Just um, be careful for bank and financial institution, for listed bank and financial institution. They also have to uh, follow the requirement of bank, Negara Malaysia. Okay, that's it for this lecture number three. I will continue with uh, lecture four in our next video thank you for watching and paying attention i'll see you when i will see you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh